ROG's new phone is coming. ROG has become one of the most popular brand for gaming phones. We all know that there are quite a few options of gaming phones coming out in 2020. We are always keen on discussing which model is the best gaming phone, and the brand ROG definitely is one that you cannot forget in the debates. Now, almost all 2020 gaming models have been released. Today we will bring you a full gaming comparison between Lenovo Legion Pro and the ROG Phone 3, which are the two best models in our list for mobile gaming. If we talked about gaming equipment or gaming accessories for some gamers, ROG is the first brand that comes into our mind. No exception for the phone accessories. And talking about PC products, the brand Lenovo is also a giant producer. Legion series is their most well-known game-focused product line. In 2020, like ROG, Lenovo also extended the gaming series to the mobile market rather than being exclusive in PC. By the way, if you prefer the two other famous brands of gaming phones, Black Shark and Red Magic, you can check out our previous video. We've done a detailed comparison of their flagship models in the first half of 2020. As for their updated models, there are very few significant upgrades, so we've not considered to bring new review videos on them. But if you're expecting a complete comparison among these four brands, please comment under this video and we may do it for you guys. Right now a gaming phone is more playing a role of single console which is still requires a bunch of accessories to enrich the mobile gaming experience. It's obvious that ROG realizes that fact and have brought interesting hardware for their gaming phones. So you are able to complete your love for the brand and mobile gaming with official accessories. While for Legion Pro there is no official accessory released so far. But Lenovo developed a peripherals mode for you to simulate console game control experience by connecting to third party mouses, keyboards and gamepads. And these accessories are also allowed to fully operate over a whole system level. But it's still hard to catch the same experience that we could still enjoy with official accessories on the ROG phone. To boost gaming operations, most game phones were equipped with shoulder buttons. No exception for these two models. Compared to the Legion Pro, ROG's phone's new air trigger system is able to achieve more complicated operations with their 2 plus 2 shoulder buttons. Each side of the shoulder buttons can be switched between single buttons and dual buttons, which means that you are able to map up to 4 single operations to the buttons. Besides, it also allows to set how many clicks per second for a long press. For example, PUBG gamers definitely know how amazing it would be if all the guns could be turned into an auto firing mode. But to be honest, in eSport gaming, such hardware assistance would make us kind of look like a cheater. But so far, the game producers haven't banned such kind of assistances. Although it's safe to have it to boost your game performance, some gamers may still feel uncomfortable to see it in eSport. In addition to basic tap and long press modes, the air triggers support vertical and horizontal slide mode, swipe mode, and macro setups. But in actual tests, these three modes are not exactly effective in most eSport gamings requiring quick response and operation. It would absolutely make you uncomfortable at the beginning and need quite a period to get used to it. Well in the Legion Pro, setups of two shoulder buttons were much simpler. As we mentioned in the last video, the Legion Pro did not pay much attention to more complicated operations. However, in actual gaming, dual tapping mode was far more practical in most games, no matter for the ROG phone or Legion Pro. So personally, to some extent, the ROG multi-features of shoulder buttons could complicate gamers operation rather than simplify operations as we thought before. Let's talk about the great 144Hz display on these two devices. They're almost the best displays we've seen on game phones, and it's hard to tell the differences between these two super smooth displays. Only one hidden feature on the ROG phone could help us distinguish which one could bring more. There is a hidden refresh rate option that allows you to boost the display refresh rate up to 160Hz. It is also the reason why we so admire their display. Using the Google ADB tool, we activated the highest refresh rate option, 160Hz, which should be the highest refresh rate we've seen on a game phone display. In some games, without frame rate limits, you're able to enjoy the amazing 160Hz frame rate rather than 144Hz. And not to mention the improvement of system fluency. One more difference is that the ROG display supports a superb touch sampling rate at 270Hz, which is also the highest setup among all the game phones. But sampling rate of the Legion Pro is also not bad. 240Hz is also a great feature for a game phone. Before we move to their performance, we have to make it clear that the performance gap between these two devices is extremely small. In 2020, to be honest, it's not really significant to access upper limits of game phone's performance as most games only provide limited graphic settings. Anyway, let's compare their benchmark performance. In 3D Marks, they both achieved a top performance and scored over 7800 which is a bit better than other gaming phones running the Snapdragon 865. In Geekbench 5, their single core test results were almost the same, while the Legion Pro took the lead in the race of multi-core testing. But considering the Legion Pro was running these benchmarks under the Rampage mode, it's not surprising that the Legion Pro might achieve a better result. 
In the following gaming tests, the Legion Pro also performed slightly better than the ROG Phone 3 in certain games. It could also owe to the efforts of Lenovo's aggressive Rampage mode, which is able to boost CPU and GPU frequency like pushing the overclock. Well, we also found a similar game assistant software on the ROG phone, the X mode and Game Genie, but compared to the Legion's 3.09 GHz CPU frequency, the X mode of ROG generally only achieved a 2.07 GHz CPU frequency. So let's check out their gaming tests. In Battlelands, a typical casual game supporting up to 144Hz frame rate, both models could run stably at the top 144Hz frame rate. The ROG phone averagely maintained a 143.6 FPS frame rate, while the Legion could stay at 142.4 FPS. They both had stutter problems when we switched between lobby and matches, but it did not really affect the gameplay and visual experience. In most casual games, we had the same experiences on these two excellent game phones always achieved the best graphics with top supported frame rate, and we didn't even turn on the performance mode. Then we run Honkai Impact 3, a special action game with excellent graphic special effects. Both models were allowed to apply 90 FPS during battling, and the gap for average frame rate was so small. For the ROG phone, it ran at 88.6 FPS, while for the Legion, the frame rate was 87.2 FPS. And then we played PUBG Mobile. To achieve a super high frame rate, we played the China version to achieve 120 FPS frame rate. Under the best graphics, we could apply both of them to run for 30 minutes. Under their game boost mode, both of them can stably maintain a full frame rate at 120 FPS. Especially the Legion Pro perfectly completed the test and surprisingly achieved an average frame rate at 119.1 FPS without much fluctuation. And the ROG Phone 3 was not bad at all with the result of 117.3 FPS. But pay attention here, the Legion Pro's best result was only for the Rampage mode. When we did nothing to boost its performance, the Legion automatically started a smart mode to maintain a lower performance with a good cooling effect. But the frame rate showed a stair down from 120 FPS to 90 FPS, and eventually down to 60 FPS. In eSport games like PUBG Mobile, such smart adjustment is quite unacceptable. So we only compared their best performance during their surround, and the Legion did perform better. Last game is Nimian Legend Bright Ridge, which could actually present you a stress test on these two monsters. We ran the game under the same highest graphics and chose the same route to play. Their frame rate curves were so similar to each other and both could achieve the 144Hz frame rate, but also sometimes could drop to around 50 FPS. Eventually, the ROG finished the stress test with a result of 73.3 FPS, while the Legion Pro took a slight lead in the race with the 80.2 FPS frame rate. Even though we turned on the 160Hz mode on the ROG phone, there is not so different as it only got slightly improved for the frame rate. In our last video, we introduced Legion Pro's superb battery and charge performance, around 30 minutes to get a full charge for the 6000 mAh batteries. Such amazing 90 watt charging efficiency really could delight gamers who don't want to waste much time on charging. Although the ROG phone 3, the 6000 mAh battery is also large enough for gaming but 30 watt charge efficiency is really not a good option for a game phone. The full charge took us an hour and 33 minutes, which is almost the only drawback for this monster. And for their audio performance, although both of the models were equipped with the dual speakers to simulate the stereo sounds, the actual hearing experience is a bit different. We have to say the Legion provided richer sound options and did produce a better stereo experience. We were even able to play games like PUBG Mobile without earphones. So that's what makes them differ from each other. The ROG phone provided professional game operations and faster touch response with the higher 270Hz sampling rate. Although it's hard to measure how it improved our gameplay, we did feel more comfortable with their well-designed shoulder buttons and speedy game operations. And there should be more fun for gamers with ROG's plenty of game accessories. On the contrary, Legion Pro's additional features beyond gameplay are definitely more attractive for the specific groups of gamers such as the streamer mode and the amazing 90 watt charge efficiency. As for their performance, really nothing to complain. And it's really not meaningful to focus on the tiny differences. Both devices could produce the best Android gaming experience in 2020. It's the first time we're not able to give you a solid pick. How about you guys? Tell us your choice. Well, thanks for watching. Good to have you here and don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. I'm Kieran, we'll see you soon.